Hey guys, it's Marco again, and we have officially reached the bottom of a barrel as rogue players. I'll talk about other classes and specs while comparing BFD to Gnomerga numbers from Warcraft logs. Looking at 90th percentile logs, I like to watch these logs since at 19th percentile people usually have gear and they know how to press buttons. You can get 90 logs even without a good team composition. All of the classes have at least one spec which outperforms us in DPS department. Currently only Feral Druids, Arcane Mages, Range Hunters and Frost Mages do less DPS than Rogues, even Tank Shamans are out DPSing Rogues, but that class is completely busted. I would be fine with being one of the lowest DPSing classes on bosses, which are majorly solo target fights, if we had other strengths. The saddest part about all of this is the fact that rogues should be the kings of solo target, since we have no cleave or AoE capabilities. The only cleave which we have is blade flurry, and it's a 2 minute cooldown, and we aren't going for that build. When it comes to speedruns, there is a lot of AoE there and rogues literally stand no chance compared to any other class and you won't see a single rogue in any of the proper speedruns. I'm not exaggerating when I say that we lost almost half of our numbers when comparing BFD number of active rogue players versus number of active players in Gnomregan. In the later section of the video, I'll cover all the class numbers, but DPS rogues went from almost 1 million logs in 2 weeks of BFD, all the way down to a bit more than 500k logs in 2 weeks of Gnomregan. That's just a super scary drop in population, especially considering that we have 18% less logs overall in Gnomregan, while DPS rogues have 50-ish percent less logs. I seriously don't understand the balancing team for PvE. We aren't good in clearing solo content and farming, our biggest strength there is stealth. We suck in any form of damage and we need a whole plethora of classes to help us boost our damage to our maximum. We need a balanced druid with dream state, which is my favorite buff for rogues, 20% nature damage is really huge. Wild strike druid, shaman or a paladin, warrior and a marksman hunter in our party. We also benefit from curse of recklessness and priestess homunculi. After you fill all those spots, that exactly leaves room for one more healer to finish the raid composition and it's all revolving around boosting rogues DPS and the best rogue logs are made in these compositions which is just insane. Lastly, if you're a raid leader and you need one more raid spot to fill and you get whispered by a feral druid, rogue and a marksmanship hunter, I assure you 90% of the people will take feral druid for wild strikes, raid buffs and utility. 9.9% .9 of the people will take the Marksman Hunter for additional range DPS, 10% stats buff and true shot aura. Only crazy people will take a rogue, so even the worst classes in terms of DPS are worth more in the raid than us. I have Marksmanship Hunter and it takes me infinitely less time to find a group with worse logs and literally no gear than with my rogue with almost best gear and 98 percentile logs. And none of the devs actually ever looked at the rogues. Why do all other classes have a bunch of party and raid buffs, huge amount of utility and everything, while rogues have their stinky solo target DPS and that's it. Some people watching the video will say, well, just play a tank rogue. I am off tanking in almost all of the raids that I managed to get in and tank rogues aren't really good. And I'm not even talking about our tanking DPS or aggro or survivability compared to other classes. I'm mostly talking about class fantasy. There is a reason why rogues are the least popular tanks. There aren't many rogue players that want to tank as a rogue. We aren't swashbucklers or something. It just goes against the class fantasy and let me tell you, playing a tank rogue is the same as playing a DPS rogue. You're just using a lot less cool combo finishers. But there is an increase in tank rogues due to a huge decrease in DPS rogue spots in the raid which result in some rogues turning to off tanking just so they can enter the raid, which is the sad reality. I'm currently done with rogues, I'm missing only 2 items from the raid and I will play my ranged hunter and mage until they finally decide to fix the biggest bleed of a class. I'm done with my rogue rant, now I will present you with the raid numbers taken from Warcraft logs and I will compare the state in BFD to the current state. The first column of tables shows the overall number of players in BFD from 2 weeks, Gnomeregan in 1 week and then the relative change in the class numbers. 
Second column is the overall number of DPS players in BFD, Gnome Regan, and the final table is the relative change in numbers. Third and fourth column are the same, but they are for tanks and lastly healers. Warlocks are usually the least popular class, and we can clearly see that in BFD numbers. They are the only non-faction based class with less than 10% of the player base. When it comes to paladins and shamans, I like to combine their overall numbers because there are no horde paladins and alliance shamans. Also, alliance is a bit more popular than the horde, which results in paladins being more popular than shamans. Overall, they together represent 13% of the player base, which is a good number. In a perfect world, classes with more roles should have a bigger representation, which should mean that druids, paladins and shamans should be the most represented class. Warrior are the second most popular class, and that means that they were kinda OP in this raid tier, and hunters are on the third spot as by far the most popular DPS class, a stark contrast to warlocks. Now let's focus on the second table. Overall number of DPS players. Since there is 8 classes, if you combine paladins and shamans, ideally all of the classes will have 12.5% of the DPS population, but that's definitely not the case. Surprisingly enough, 46% of the DPS were ranged DPS and 54% were melee DPS. I was expecting a lot more melee DPS than ranged DPS. Priests are by far the least popular class in BFD, with every 60th DPS choosing to play a priest. This means that they were basically unplayable as a DPS. Shamans were also in a rough spot, but that's to be expected, since they didn't have the majority of their great talents and abilities, but they are still a lot more popular than priests. Warlocks are the next least represented class, but you'll see at least one warlock DPS in every other raid. Paladin and mage DPS players were in a perfect spot, where you should usually see them in every raid. When it comes to rogue, warrior and druid DPS, you would see at least one in every raid and now and then there would be two class representatives. Lastly, the kings of the DPS groups were hunters, and in three raids you would see four hunters on average. Tanks are the least needed role in the game, and usually you would only get one tank per raid, but some raids are going for two tanks. In BFD, every other tank was either a shaman or a paladin, and they were clearly busted to tank with, especially in speedrunning. Third best tank were the warriors, and they were detonating the solo target bosses with the devastate spam. Fourth most popular tanks were the warlocks, the least popular tanks were the feral druids and rogue tanks. There is a good chance that you haven't seen anyone tank BFD with a druid or a rogue, since on average you would need to do 30-ish clears to see a single druid tank and 20-ish for a single rogue tank. Feral druids were just bad overall, but rogue tanks were the second best tanks in terms of DPS, just after protection warriors. Their unpopularity is mainly based on Blizzard missing the mark with the class fantasy. Lastly, when it comes to healers, on average you would have two healers, every 10th raid would bring one healer with them. The priests were hard dominating, but that's natural since they do the best healing and every raid needs at least one priest for the stamina buff, and when you don't have shadow priests, you have to take a healer priest. Restoration druids were a decent healer, especially in terms of solo healing the whole BFD. You could see a mage or shaman healer, here and there, usually one of them in every 5th raid that you attend. Paladins were the biggest disappointment in terms of healing, and they were quite unplayable, but they were still more popular than rogue and druid tanks or shaman priest DPS. When it comes to Gromregan, there is just a bit more tanks and healers at the moment, less people are currently deciding to solo tank Gnomregan and to solo heal Gnomregan. This number should be closer as we progress further down the phase. In overall number of players, we can immediately see that paladins and shamans skyrocketed in this phase, mostly thanks to shamans being OP across the board. Priests also saw a substantial boost, they still remain the best healers, and now they can actually do some DPS. Mages and Warlocks saw a boost in their numbers, mostly because they became quite better in Phase 2 and Paladins received the same increase as them, but that's mostly because they are wanted as tanks and their healing isn't as bad as it used to be. Losers in overall numbers were Druids, since Feral Kittens are a lot less stronger and Shamans get their Wind Fury Totems, so they are less needed on the Horde side. However, Balanced Druids received a huge boost in their numbers, but it wasn't enough. 
Hunters lost quite a bit of population, mostly because players don't want to play melee hunters even if they're one of the best DPS classes in the raid. By far the biggest losers of this raid are the rogues and warriors. Warriors tanked a few spots in terms of DPS, but they're mostly suffering since protection warriors are the worst tanking class at the moment. When it comes to rogues, they just suck across the board and some rogues in hopes of getting into the raid turned more to tanking. Overall rogues and warriors are by far the biggest losers of this patch and shamans together with priests are the biggest winners. When it comes to DPS chart, 49% of the DPS players in Gnomregan are ranged DPS and 51% are melee DPS. But that was to be expected since melee groups have one more spot than ranged groups thanks to needing one tank and two healers, but the distribution of the DPS is super close. Clearly from the table you can see that caster DPSers were the clear winners in this raid tier, together with melee shamans and melee hunters. All of the caster DPSers received huge increase in numbers. There is four times more shadow priests in Gnomregan than in BFD. They're still the least played DPS class, but they're certainly viable at the moment. Overall DPS composition is a lot more healthy in Gnomeregan since all of the classes are represented. You'll see a Shadow Priest in every second raid. On average you'll see 3 Warlock, Rogue, Shaman and Paladin DPSers in 4 raid lockouts. You'll need 10 lockouts to miss a raid with a Warrior DPS and you'll have at least 1 Mage, Druid or Hunter in every of your raids. But compared to BFD numbers, Hunters and Druids are losers mostly because balanced druids couldn't stop the bleed of feral druids and the same goes for melee hunters. Paladin DPS suffered a lot in Gnomregan since there's a new kid in town, melee hunter. Same goes for warriors, but warriors are also overshadowed by melee shamans. But by far the biggest losers in phase 2 are rogues. They're facing the same problem as warriors, but to a bigger extent since they're also overshadowed by warriors. If you saw 100 DPS rogues in BFD, you will only see 70 DPS rogues in Gromagran, which is a scary drop. In terms of tanks, paladins and shamans are the absolute winners, more so shamans since their DPS even as a tank is just broken. Paladins are quite tanky and hold a good aggro on AoE packs, which makes them the most desired tank for the alliance. Warriors are a dumpster fire of tanks at the moment, in my opinion they are the worst tanks in terms of DPS and therefore aggro, but they offer nice utility with shouts and sunder armor, but priests can do a better job at sundering armor anyway. Feral druids boomed in tanking because they are quite good off tanks and they are utility machines with their buffs and wild strikes and they mostly grabbed all the warrior tank spots in alliance groups. Rogues are still by far the least popular tanks, they only out DPS warriors and druids, but offer literally no utility. I would say that their increase is mostly thanks to off tanking, which makes it much easier to enter raids. When it comes to healing, priests are still undisputed champions, but they lost some population, mostly because shadow priests became viable and the fact that paladins can actually heal in phase 2. From what I've seen, the worst healers are the mages, but they're good on the other hand because they do the biggest amount of damage while healing. I would say that healing is an okay state, even with the vast majority of priests. You'll take a priest in the raid together with any other healer, there is little to no discrimination. When it comes to DPS output, by far the biggest winners are both Enhancement and Elemental Shamans. They jump 9 and 7 spots in terms of DPS compared to BFD and together with their utility they are the absolute kings of Gnomeregan in my opinion. Fire Mages jumped 5 spots getting to rank 2 from 7th place in BFD. Priests became playable but they are still near the bottom of the table. Melee Hunters are the second best melee DPS. Balanced Druids moved up a bit in the world, but they are mostly wanted due to their utility. Locks and Paladins mostly remained where they were and Frost Majors are still the biggest trash there is. Luckily for them they can just play Fire Mages. Arcane Mages lost a few spots and now we're coming to the biggest losers. Warriors went from being the top dogs to the 6th place 
middle of the pack DPS. However, they're still quite decent when it comes to speedruns due to their cleave. Feral Druids fell from 4th spot to 11th spot, absolute disaster for them. Rogues are the biggest L takers of this phase overall, so it's not surprising that they went from 2nd best DPS to 10th best DPS. Lastly, we have range hunters, which fell off a cliff. From 3rd spot all the way to the 2nd last DPS spot. Tank DPS also follows the same trend as normal DPS. Again, shamans are the ultimate winners. Good shaman tank will do almost the same damage to bosses as a good retribution paladin. So technically, tank shamans are the 7th best DPS class, which is insane considering that they are tanks with an insane amount of utility. Warlocks are moving up in the world, they have more dodge chance than rogue tanks, which I just find too funny, and they are now 2nd best DPS in the raid. Druids moved up one spot, but really it's not that druids moved up, it's more of that warrior spell so they can rise for a spot. Rogues just lost a DPS battle to paladins, warlock and shamans, and the biggest losers are warriors which are by far the lowest DPS tank in phase 2. From first place to last one in one phase definitely feels bad. Finally when it comes to class distribution, warrior DPS saw an increase, mostly because warrior tanks are just so bad. Retribution Paladins lost a big chunk of their numbers, because they're pushed away from the raid with the addition of a new melee DPS class, which is the melee hunters, and most of the Paladins which got pushed away focused more on tanking and healing to get into the raids. Hunters went from mostly ranged to two thirds of them being melee. I personally don't like this change, especially after seeing how easy and boring it is to play a melee hunter. This all happened because Frankly, range hunters do so much less damage than melee hunters and they require more skill. Overall number of shamans in the raid increased, we have a bit smaller amount of shaman tanks, we have a bit more healers, and the biggest amount of players probably rerolled warriors and rogues into shamans, and now they're playing enhancement and elemental DPS. Kitty druids fell from grace and their numbers were replaced by boomkins and tank druids, but that wasn't enough to recover the loss of kitties. Feral druids are still quite needed for alliance players, while if you're playing horde you actually don't need them if you have enough shamans. Rogues remained relatively the same, we see double amount of tank rogues, but tank rogues are still such a small amount of population. And the increase of tank rogues isn't due to tank rogues being good, it's mostly thanks to rogue DPS being bad and an addition of enhancement shaman and melee DPS hunters. Mage healers lost a bit on popularity, mostly because fire mages are blasting the raid, so why would you heal when you can be the top dog DPS? When it comes to priests, there is a big drop off of healers, but that's mostly just because Shadow Priest finally became playable. Lastly, distribution of Warlocks remained relatively the same, and they're usually forced to play meta on the last boss to deal with the bombs. After we are done with all these numbers and statistics, I need to say that this phase is again horde oriented. Shamans were better than Paladins in Phase 1, in Phase 2 the gap became even bigger. I really don't understand the balance team. How can a tank shaman out DPS majority of the DPS classes? Literally tank shamans are better at DPSing than Retribution Paladins. Like how could that happen? I'm currently playing both factions and the faction imbalance in my opinion is quite palpable. Shamans are just better than paladins by a big margin in both PvE and PvP, so there definitely should be some changes. And the last most important message to Blizzard developers, buff rogues. Thank you for watching and bye bye.